Thank you for still being with us. We now have uh, with us Professor Remy Shonaya, who is a former presidential candidate, uh, COA, and Napisa Atiku, lawyer and author. Good to have you both this morning. Thank you. Good morning. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll begin with, uh, thank you very much, Professor. I'll begin with you, Professor Shonaya. Are we having to work backwards in uh, you know, the development of our politics in the sense that we are speaking of moving away from self-serving politics to one that is centered around ideology and issues? Shouldn't the latter have been the starting point, if I ask you? Yes, indeed. It, it, it should have been the starting point. Uh, politics uh, should be about good governance. And good governance would uh, involve having good policies, uh, having people in the center of, of these policies, that is, uh, delivering good services to them and so on. Unfortunately, and, and this is right from the start, right from, you know, uh, when we gained independence, um, somehow our policies had been rooted in um, ethnic identity, uh, individual people uh, taking power and you know, uh, giving their own people the advantage and so on and so forth. You know, of course, we, we know the history also of how the uh, former colonial masters played of the differences among us as, as, as a nation. You know, so all of that provided the, uh, the, 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 the unstable foundation for the politics of the country. Hmm. And now uh, the, the task ahead of us is, is to divest ourselves of those wrong ideas and be able to properly understand what good governance is, how it affects all of our lives, affects the state of our nation, and make sure that the, the people who we choose to run our affairs are not people who are there for themselves, not, not people driven by self-aggrandizement, uh, what they stand to gain, but people who know how to uh, put the common good uh, at the forefront and be able to work towards improving the lot of the generality of the people. All right, let me uh, guess, we, we have to start it. Let me get and, and maybe that way involve creating a new breed of uh, politicians. All right, Professor, let me get Nafisa's uh, thoughts to who is also on the line. Uh, what, what will it take, Nafisa, if I may ask you, to take us away from what we have known towards a more progressive foundation in our politics? Okay. Did you get me, or should I take the question again? Nafisa, are you there? Yes, I'm here, but I didn't get you. Okay, so uh, we're talking about ideologies and, of course, politics, and I'm sure you heard some of uh, the issues raised there by Professor Shonaya. My yes, question please. for you now is what will it take to take us away from what we have known, you know, towards a more progressive foundation in our politics? Well, um, thank you, first of all. To be honest, I think we have to go back to the foundation of things. We do not have a strong and proper foundation as it is in our democracy. Several things that I would like to point out. Um, the concept of having the proper ideology, having a system of eternal democracies in, pol in the political parties, and having a better thing, system of giving us candidates in the electoral system and having an in the electorate. I think these are four cardinal points on which we can stand on and start to move forward and have a more progressive system of government or democracy in Nigeria. Uh, Professor Shania, you said we may need, one of the things you mentioned is the fact that we may need to produce a new breed of politicians. 
as one Definitely. who <laughs> you also at some point um, campaigned for the presidential seat, would the involvement mm -hmm. of more women, you know, uh, in politics, which we've seen very less of them, trigger the paradigm shift that we long for? Um, I, I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so because that's part of my uh, idea that if we made our politics uh, at the highest level more inclusive, then we would have a diversity of, of uh, skills, of competences that would be brought into governance and that that should help the country. We have clear evidence that where you have such a uh, more inclusive governance system, uh, the societies are more stable, they make more progress, and so on. However, please, just to quickly add something to your question to Nafisa about what it would take us. Mm -hmm. I think it is also important to go back to our foundation. What we are supposed to be is a federal system. It's, we, we are called the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And there's a reason that that kind of system was decided upon when we were about to get independence. Unfortunately, the military came in and imposed this uh, centralized system of government uh, upon us all. And what it has produced is, is, is mediocrity across the entire country, uh, throwing us all into one big part of, 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 of uh, bad governance and mediocrity and poverty and so on. We must return to the structure that we agreed upon mm -hmm. so that we don't have such a powerful central government and, and uh, the, the people in the different regions will be able to determine their, their, their priority mm -hmm. in terms of, of governance. You know, I, I think that, that is one, one important thing. But definitely, I would like to see more people, uh, more women, mm -hmm. uh, more diversity at the level of uh, decision-making, policy-making at the very, very higher uh, high, the, the highest levels of leadership in the country. All right. Nafisa, it's uh, your turn now to also respond. You, you know, we always talk about our leaders and complain about politicians, those who have found their way into, you know, power, so to speak. But what is the role of the people in all of this? You know, how are the voters to mature in engagement such that we begin to demand a more progressive type of politics? What do we do? Okay, two things. First of all, I'm going to talk about civic education. Um, we have an electorate that is not so enlightened in the, aspect, in the aspect that we do not educate ourselves enough on the most important things. Most of us vote along ethnic, tribal, religious sentiments. We don't vote on the things that actually matter in the sense of competency. Can this person do the job properly? Do they have integrity? Will they be able to deliver to us the future and the country that we want? We need to educate ourselves properly. And I know that we need to head from where we are down to the rural classes and educate them as well. Because if people do, sorry, know better, they will do better. And the second thing, we need to demand for a better system. Because I was asking someone the other day that why do we have, why do we continually have a system that throws up the worst candidates to us? Why are we always talking about, oh, this person doesn't have their certificate? Why exactly do we always have this problem when it comes to the elections and our political system? Why do we have a system that throws up those people? We need to get to a point that we demand for a better system that will produce more competent candidates, more educated candidates, and more candidates that have a lot of integrity. That's the part that we should play. So very much, Nafisa Atiku and Professor Remy Shanaya as well for your contributions. And do keep safe out there, both of you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. All right. And then, Libras, very quickly, um, we always have this conversation about ideology and politics. Why, do we, why are we working so hard, hard to figure it out? Why is it not crystal clear to every Nigerian? Yeah, because politics is the only business in Nigeria. Uh, that's why somebody would leave um, a bank job, for example, to go into politics. Mm. And that's why somebody would rather, um, he calls himself as an, an, an entrepreneur, and then, but you see him struggling to become a counselor. Uh, you know, so because that's the only business. Even, you know, most of our rich men, rich businessmen in Nigeria, you know, all have one form of government patronage mm. and the other. And so that's why everybody now wants to rush, you know, to go grab directly, you know, from the cookie jar. And so that's, and then once that happens, you know, every other thing takes the backstage, ideology or whatever takes the backstage. And then it is, how do I get power? Mm. And you know, knowing fully well that once you get power here, you know, the world becomes your first step. The entire country becomes your first step. And the do you know who I am mentality, you know, also comes in. So the people, rather than, you know, rise up to ask questions, they turn to either, you know, God, mm. and then also wait to bid their turn to get a slice of the cake. Mm, that's and cake. so that's why you have what you have. We we'll rather, you know, end it with it is well. If it gets to your turn, you will do it. We'll rather turn to God and call on God to come create you know, those things that he has empowered us to do. Mm. God cannot come down to build hospitals for you. It is people you elected to office that will build hospitals. God cannot come down to give you educational curriculum. God cannot come down from heaven to build schools for you. God cannot come down to build roads. It is so bad now that... We, we, when governors pay salaries, we boast. We know, oh, yes, he's paying salaries. Mm. He has built roads. You know, ordinarily, these are not things that we should even be campaigning about. But that's right from the First Republic. These are the things that we have consistently campaigned about. Because once you become, you know, once you hold a political office, you know, you're unquestionable. Mm. And so in a society where you're unquestionable, that job, that gives you freedom to do as you like becomes very attractive to everybody. And the answer, but the answer we keep seeking for is how do we get it right? How? The only way we can get it right is simple. We have to understand that it is not God that will come down to do these things. Mm -hmm. That these we things are not rocket science. And then lastly, that when a man is elected to do a job, the man is like a servant that you have employed to do something for you. And so he shouldn't be the master. So you can send him on an errand. You can question him. You can ask him to give account. But the reverse is the case here. When we elect somebody to do a job, we rather worship him. And then we create excuses for him why he's not been able to do that job. And, and so once that happens, he now becomes unquestionable. And a man who is unquestionable is a lord. Mm. 